to make room for those in the back. So today we'll discuss this most glorious Damodar Lila. You ready? Who's ready to go to Rindavan? Mother, are you ready? <laughs> 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 so we will go to Vrindavan today by hearing this beautiful pastime of Dhamma Bandana, the Dhamma Nirvana. So we'll just read from Srimad Bhagavatam one uh, verse about this pastime and then discuss. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Narayanam Namaskritya. Narayanam Namaskritya. Naram Chaiva Narottama. Naram Chaiva Narottama. Satim Vyasam, Devim Sarasatim Vyasam, Tato Jaya Mudiriya, Tato Jaya Mudiriya, Nasta Prayeshu Bhadreshu, Nasta Prayeshu Bhadreshu, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Shloke, Bhagavati Uttama Shloke, Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki, Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki, Hare Krishna. Read from from Canto Ten, Chapter Nine, Text Number Nine, Title: Mother Yashoda Binds Lord Krishna. I'll just read the Sanskrit, and we'll read the translation for four. Tamata yashtim prasamiksha sattvaras tato vaihura pasara bhitava opiyana vadanam yo apiyoginam. Shamam pravashtam tapasharitam manaha. Translation. When Lord Krishna, when Lord Sri Krishna saw his mother stick in hand, he very quickly got down from the top of the mortar and began to flee as if very much afraid. Although yogis tried to capture him as Paramatma by meditation, desiring to enter into the effulgence of the Lord, with great austerities and penances, they failed to reach him. But Mother Yashoda, thinking that same personality of Godhead, Krishna, to be her son, began following Krishna to catch him. Purport by his divine grace. AC Bhakti Vedanta Samshila Prabhupada. Shila Prabhupada Ki. Yogis, mystics, want to catch Krishna as Paramatma, and with great austerities and penances they try to approach him. Yet they cannot. Here we see, however, that Krishna is going to be caught by Yashoda and is running away in fear. This illustrates the difference between the bhakta and the yogi. Yogis cannot reach Krishna, but for pure devotees like Mother Yashoda, Krishna is already caught. Krishna was even afraid of Mother Yashoda's stick. This was mentioned by Queen Kunti in her prayers. Bhaya Bhavanaya Stitasya, Bhagavatam 1831. Krishna is afraid of Mother Yashoda, and yogis are afraid of Krishna. Yogis try to reach Krishna by jnana yoga and other yogas, but fail. Yet, although Mother Yashoda was a woman, Krishna was afraid of her, as clearly described in this verse. Om Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sathitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dharati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Arunatam Itam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sadhutam Parijana Saritam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Hatha Krishna Padam Sarana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamsha 
हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी कृष्णानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय कृपा सिंधु पतिताेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः नमो विष्णुपराय कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवाणी पाश्चात्यता जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनांद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासाई गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 So welcome to our first Kartik Mass Bhakti Viksha. So it's very nice to be here with everyone. So I'll read this verse again. When Lord Shri Krishna saw his mother stick in hand, he very quickly got down from the top of mortar and began to flee, as if very much afraid. Although yogis try to capture him as Paramatma by meditation. Desiring to enter into the effulgence of the Lord with great austerities and penance, they fail to reach Him. But Mother Yashoda, thinking that same personality of God and Krishna to be her son, began following Krishna to catch Him. So this is this Dhamma Bandhan of pastime. This Dhamma Darlila is one of the most amazing pastimes of Krishna. But the pastimes of Krishna, they can be very bewildering. Um, you know, the pastimes of Krishna, sometimes of Lord Ramachandra, we see incongruences to the fact that they're the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Right? How the Supreme Personality of Godhead can be running in fear. How the Supreme Personality of Godhead can go and steal. How Lord Ram can be subdued and lose his beloved mother Sita and go into the forest searching and, and, and pitifully crying and where is she? He's a supreme personality of God. How are these things possible? And so to the mundane speculator, it leads one to actually draw faulty conclusions about the supreme. You know, when we see like Lord Vishnu, Lord Narayan, four arms, very royal, grand, it becomes quite easy. Yes, this is Lord. But when we see these pastimes of Lord Ramchandra, of Lord Krishna, we can sometimes become bewildered. So what to do? We have to understand these pastimes through the explanations of the prior acharya. Because actually these seemingly contradictions in the character, right? Is Krishna a thief? Is he timid and fearful? Is Lord Ram unable to get his wife back without, without any with the help of so many people he needs? How he can say all powerful? So these are seemingly contradictions, no? They are seeming contradictions, but they are not. So when we understand these pastimes, we actually see that these contradictions actually expand the greatness of the Supreme Lord. And they actually expand the significance of the position of the Supreme Personality of God. But again, to the mundane speculator, we think, huh, wow, this person can be God? So it is... Uh, our great fortune and opportunity to hear and to understand these pastimes from our acharyas so that we can understand um, them in clarity but also to see the extraordinary potency of Krishna and 
his devotees. Because these inconsistencies, in many ways, they are there only to glorify Krishna's devotees. So let us see. We know that Krishna comes to this material world for many reasons, at least are explained. Paritranaya sadhanam, vinashaya chaduskatam, and dharma shamstapanarthaya. And he comes, sambhavami yuge yuge. So these three reasons Krishna gives in the Bhagavad Gita. When our tribes explains, he actually comes for even a higher reason. And what is that? To enjoy with his devotees. And to show his pastimes to all of us, his aspiring devotees. So that we may become inspired to also uh, serve, following in the footsteps of these great devotees. And to reach those levels of happiness and love with the Supreme Lord. So he performs these pastimes to inspire us, to guide us in our actions, to guide us in our daily sadhana. So when we hear these pastimes, we should meditate on what tangible instructions, inspiration, I can draw into my daily practice of devotional service. Otherwise it becomes some nice entertainment, which is certainly no harm, but to really get the essence of what Krishna is trying to do here, we try to draw some inspiration. So we'll discuss this pastime, and in the duration of the pastime, we'll take a couple of side jobs to talk about some of the philosophy that is transpiring during this pastime. And then we'll come back and continue the story. So we'll try to not take too far of a diversion that we lose where we are in the track of the narration. But it's a, there's a couple of important spots to take a pause and to meditate and to try to think what is happening here. And my hope is that we'll get some inspiration. So I will forewarn you, at the end, I'll ask you, you know, what you took away from this, and what you um, maybe sunk a little bit deeper in your heart, and you hope you'll apply in your day-to-day -day practice. Okay? So you're all forewarned? No gulab jamuns until then. Okay? And then afterwards, of course, we'll have the glorious opportunity to offer a lamp, to Lord Damodar, which you all heard last week in your Bhakti Vikshas, the extraordinary significance of doing so. Okay. So Lord Krishna, He is, who is Lord Krishna? Supreme Personality of Godhead. It means, is anyone stronger than Krishna? Is anyone more knowledgeable than Krishna? Anyone more intelligent than Krishna? Anybody more knowing than Krishna? This is what we mean by Supreme Personality. We all have some knowledge, we have some strength, some intelligence. But Krishna has all of that in Supreme form. Right? So we have to try to hold that fact true and understand Krishna being bound by Mother Yashoda. That seems... So this pastime takes place in the beautiful land of Sri Vrindavan Dham. Sri Vrindavan Dham is the perfection of creation. The most beautiful place in the whole world. Everything is perfect. In Brahma Samhita we see very beautiful prayers, how the songs of the birds, the, the, the mist from the rivers, the clouds in the sky, the soothing breezes in the air, the flowers creating an aromatic smell, all create the perfect mood for Krishna to perform his pastimes with his devotees. And Krishna performs unlimited varieties of pastimes. The spiritual world is full of variegatedness. It is not abstract or amorphous, but it is full of of persons, the Supreme Person and all of the living entities. And there they engage 
and very beautiful pastimes. And if we perfect our practice of devotional service, we also have that opportunity to participate in these pastimes. So Krishna, this pastime takes place in, the, in, in Gokul, we know. And Krishna lived in Gokul for the first three years and four months of his time on this planet. After that, he moved to Chatikar, and then from there he went to Kamyavan, to Deeg, and then ultimately to Nandagra. So the first three years, four months, he stayed there. And we know this pastime took place in Gokul. So we know this pastime took place sometime before he completed his third year, fourth month. And we know that this pastime takes place on the day of... Anybody remember? Diwali. Diwali. Takes place on the day of Diwali. The day before Govardhan Puja. Of course, Govardhan Puja has not yet manifested. That is coming a few years later in this pastime. But it's on the following day. So on this particular day, Krishna is sleeping in his beautifully adorned bed with wonderful fabrics and soft pillows. And Mother Yashoda has entered his room and beautiful Krishna is just sleeping. And she just strokes his hair and comfortably keeps him resting. She went into the room this day a little earlier than normal because she wanted to perform some household activities. And we know when children are up, can we do our household activities no. properly? <laughs> Mataji's no. They're all shaking their head. So Mother Yashoda thought, let me get up extra early. So she went to make sure that Krishna was sleeping peacefully. And he was... <laughs> wasn't quite snoring. But he was transcendentally sleeping in bliss. So Mother Yashoda became happy. She tied her sari down and went to engage in activities. On this day, because all the servants in the home were getting prepared for the Indra Puja that was taking place next day, she was alone. And she was very happy. Because she thought, today is my day to make butter for Krishna. Who else should make butter for Krishna? I should make. I am mother. My son keeps going to all the neighbor's house and stealing their butter. Let me make some really extra good butter today. And that way, he'll stay home with me, and enjoy my butter. So Mother Yashoda was so enthused. She got up early, got ready, and checked on Krishna, and then left. And she went to the courtyard, and she began to get her materials ready for churning the butter. And she had her pot of yogurt that she was going to churn into butter. And, but she was feeling some lamentation in her heart. She was feeling some uh, anxiety. And that was, she was separated from Krishna. So, she does what all great devotees do. In separation of Krishna, she began to think about the Supreme Lord, remembering all His very sweet pastimes. In that way, she began to sing very beautiful songs glorifying the activities of Krishna. How he used to crawl around in the uh, courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. How he used to kill this demon and that demon. Even those pastimes were very sweet. And how he used to play and, and make fun and create so much trouble. And like this, she is singing all these beautiful songs. As she is churning the butter and she is churning. Her bangles are hitting each other and they're making the perfect sound of the kartals. Ching, 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 ching as she's singing. And the churning rod is hitting the, the pot, the mortar, with this thud of a sound. Like the perfect beat of a merdanga. And like this, she has a perfect musical accompaniment as she is singing the glories of the Lord. And she is engaged in service. This is our first instruction. How Mother Yashoda was engaged in the service of the Lord. By physical labor, 
churning the butter, the yogurt into butter. She was thinking and meditating on the sweet pastimes of the Lord. She was speaking, glorifying her, the glories of Krishna. And she was hearing those own glorifications. This is devotional service. Engaging all of our senses in devotional but there is one feature that Mother Yoshoda forgot. That when we sing the glories of Krishna, who comes? Now, her objective was to get up early, let Krishna sleep, so she can finish her work. But in such ecstatic love, she began to sing about Krishna. So who is surely going to come? Krishna. So Krishna is fast asleep and she, he hears the transcendental sweet sounds coming from his beloved mother's mouth, glorifying him. And he's transcendentally awoken. But he says, huh? Where is Ma? Every day I wake up and as soon as my eyes open, who is the first person he sees? Mother Yashoda. She would just wait there. Enter his room and just wait. So for the moment he woke up, she would be there. She wanted not to miss one moment of his beautiful pastimes. But today, she's not there. And he's thinking, what? She's gone on to do household work and forgot me? What does a child do when feeling neglected by mother? To become happy? No. Oh. So he decides, oh boy, what is going on? So he stretches out, does a little bit, and he kicks his feet off the side of the bed, crawls down and pops on the ground. This young baby, and he starts, you know, clumsily walking, hearing, where is Mother Yashoda? Where is Mother Yashoda? Hearing the transcendental sound. So Krishna is going and he is feeling hungry and he is now becoming agitated. We get agitated when we're hungry. <laughs> As adults we do, certainly when kids. So he is feeling hungry. Here is like the first contradiction. How Krishna can be hungry? He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is Atma Rama. What does that mean? It means self-satisfied. He doesn't need external anything to be satisfied. We feel hungry, we need chapatis, rice, dal, sabji, gulab jamuns to satisfy. But Krishna is self-satisfied. If he needs something, he just thinks that it's there. So how he could have unsatisfied hunger? It should get satisfied, no? Krishna is hungry and he's agitated. How that can be? Because Krishna has hunger for one thing. And that is for the love of his devotees. Krishna has everything. And he needs nothing. But what does he want? The love from his devotees. So Mother Yashoda, he was wanting to engage with Mother Yashoda. So this was his hunger. Hunger for Mother Yashoda's motherly affection. This Vatsalya Bhav. So he goes and finds Mother Yashoda churning. And the first thing he does is he grabs the churning rod. And then he impresses his Oh, I was able to hold and stop the churning. You know, young boys, when they do something brave, they become very proud, right? Chin comes up a little bit, right? Yeah, so Krishna does the same. And Mother Yashoda is kind of smiling. And oh, my boy is grown up. You know, their mother also becomes proud when child does something new and fresh. And they go share on WhatsApp or Facebook. And <laughs> so Mother Yashoda did the same. She told all the elderly gopis transcendentally, Krishna just stopped the churning run. And our Acharya's comment actually, that Krishna stopping this churning run is also very instructive to us that we are guided, that we should not keep churning and churning all this philosophical speculation. 
No, we should acquire sufficient knowledge to know who am I, who is Krishna, and what is my internal relationship. And with that knowledge, we should just simply engage in chanting and remembering Krishna. That is the perfection of life. No need to constantly churn and churn all the different philosophies. Just keep it simple. So, Krishna, having stopped the churning rod, jumps into the lap of Mother Yashoda. Not even did she grab him, he just, he knew his spot. <laughs> he said, this is my spot. And he jumped into the lap of Mother Yashoda. He looks up at Mother Yashoda, and she knew he wanted to drink her milk. And Mother Yashoda was in such ecstasy because she was singing about Krishna in separation and now he has come, forgetting about the fact that her household duties have become disturbed. And she is crying and bathing Krishna with her tears and begins to offer her breast with milk to Krishna. And here, a very transcendental competition ensues. Because Krishna's belly is growing ever bigger and bigger, trying to drink more and more of Mother Yashoda's love. Never becoming satiated. So it wants more and more. But Mother Yashoda, in giving love to Krishna, is having unlimited supply. And she cannot end her reservoir of love for Krishna. And so what's going to finish first? The space in Krishna's belly or Mother Yashoda's milk? And in this way, this is the eternal exchange of love between Krishna and his devotees. Neither finishes. Neither Krishna's relishing nor Krishna's devotees resources to supply love. This is the endless eternal lila in the spiritual world. And so Mother Yashoda is just feeding Krishna. And Krishna is just drinking to his heart's content. And each moment is million times more sweet than the moment before. And like this, this is going on. Now as this is going on, Mother Yashoda remembers, oh no, we know mothers are very good. Are they one task? No, they're always doing many tasks at once, right? That's the definition of mother. <laughs> Has to do many things at once, right? Mataji's all shaking their head. Prabhu's are saying, I have no idea. <laughs> I can't even do one task, right? Mataji's <laughs> are doing seven at the same time and making sure that Prabhu does their one task half right. <laughs> so, Mother Yashoda, while churning the yogurt into milk, she was, had boiled some milk on the stove. And that milk was starting to overflow. And here she is feeding Krishna. Krishna came in a mood, an agitated mood, wanting to eat. And she is left in a dilemma what to do. Because the milk is overflowing, but she is feeding Krishna. So she decides, makes the transcendental decision that let me put Krishna down for a moment and go and attend to the milk. So she goes to put Krishna down and attends to the milk. As she gets to the milk, something happens. The milk stopped overflowing. But why? She had not yet turned down the heat. How many of us have gone to an overflowing pot and it just stops automatically? <laughs> no. Even if we turn off the heat, it still continues. But this is the spiritual world. Everything is animate. It has life. It has consciousness. Even the milk has consciousness. Srila Prabhupada tells us the story of Mother Yashoda cooking rice. How she cooks rice? She puts in the pot, puts on the stove, and then goes in the courtyard, does other activities. Remember multitasking? So she's doing other activities. And then when she wants to check the rice, she goes and pinch to see if it's cooked. She just yells in the courtyard, Rice, are you done yet? And the rice said, Couple more minutes. A couple more minutes. Okay, let me know when. This is how things get done. Everything is animate. Everything is engaged in Krishna's service. So the milk is also animate. And this was no ordinary milk. 
Nanda Maharaj had 900,000 cows. And Mother Yashoda, being so determined to make the best of the best yogurt and milk so that Krishna would not go out to steal, you can see some embarrassment might be there, right? Why my son is not satisfied by my own? Let me get the best of Nanda Baba's herd. 900,000 cows he had. He, she took the very special herd. And from there she would take milk from that herd. And it was the most fragrant of all milk. And from that she was boiling to make some foodstuffs. So this milk was very, very special. But the milk was overflowing. But then it stopped. What happened? That milk was watching that when Krishna was drinking the milk from Mother Yashoda, he was saying that Mother Yashoda's milk supply was not finishing. And at the same time, Krishna was not getting uh, tired of Mother Yashoda's milk. He wanted more and more. And this milk in the pot thought, what is our value? Krishna will never drink us now. He's being satisfied by Mother Yashoda's milk. If I cannot be used to please Krishna, then what is the value of my existence? Better we jump into this fire and commit suicide. So the milk was jumping over the pot, not due to excess heat, but due to excess love for Krishna. And thinking, my opportunity for seva is not there. And thus the milk was jumping over. We see extra heat, but it was not extra heat. It was because they were feeling wear and tough. But, why the milk stop? The milk stopped because as Mother Yashoda approached, the milk then realized, Oh, Krishna, what a great offense we made. What offense they made? By them jumping out of the pot, committing suicide. They have interrupted Krishna's happiness with Mother Yashoda. Now this simple pot of milk contains the highest mood of how we should do our devotional service. See, often when we do our devotional service, our focus is on what I can do. I want to do this service. I want to do that service. I want this one, but not this one. And in those statements, how many eyes are there? <laughs> Unlimited. And how many thoughts of what will please Krishna most are there? The milk is saying that because of our selfishness in wanting to serve that way, and we were jumping into the fire, we disrupted Mother Yashoda's service to Krishna. And they felt embarrassed. The devotee is always thinking, not what I want to do, but what it is that I can do that can please Krishna most. If we approach our service in this mood, what it is that can please Krishna most. If I am making chapatis for Krishna in the kitchen, and somebody else comes wanting to make chapatis, normally what happens? Elbows come out. <laughs> but what should happen? Oh, they make better chapatis than me. Let me assist them in making chapatis for Krishna. Because what is my desire, or should my desire be? What will please Krishna more? Not what I want to do. So the devotee thinks in this light. So this milk was lamenting, Oh, I made a great mistake. And thus, it stopped overflowing into the pot. This is the mood of bhakti that we can try to inculcate. Thinking, what will please Krishna? So meanwhile, Mother Yashoda has gone to attend the pot. How do we think Krishna feels being left angry. alone? Angry. He is angry. Actually, his mood of angry, it is the, that is the word used, that Krishna was angry. Now, this lies 
one of our first seemingly contradictions. Well, the first was he was hungry. No? How the Lord can be hungry? Now we see that Krishna becomes angry. How Krishna can become angry? Angry, anger we know arises from lust. From lust comes anger. Kama Esha, Krodha Esha. So, and Kama and Krodha, they come from the mode of passion. Krishna is above, beyond the modes of material nature. So how Krishna can have anger? This is the depth of Mother Yashoda's Bhakti, actually. That Krishna is so pleased by Mother Yashoda's motherly love that the depth of her bhakti is so pure, it actually can invoke this mood of anger from Krishna just to enhance the motherly affection between her, between Mother Yashoda and Krishna. Because our Acharya's comment that some might say, some people call that he had anger and also tears, and they call them false tears. But Jiva Goswami says, no, they're not false tears. They're real tears. Why are they not false? We see false tears on the stage, no? Or on the film set. Why? Because the tears are giving the impression to somebody else who's watching that I'm crying. But here, Krishna was alone in. Nobody was there. So how we can be acting? What is the point of acting? We act when somebody is there to see. When nobody is there, and some, those are real. So Jiva Goswami concludes, no, these are real tears. But not tears born on material conditioning. Tears induced by the extraordinary love this is the depth of bhakti. That the supreme personality of Godhead, the almighty, all powerful, can be induced into these moods when his pure devotee renders service to him. So Krishna actually was angry. And tears. And he bites his lip. And then he thinks, what do kids do when they get upset at parents? They want to get back at them somehow. So he thinks, I'm going to break this pot. Mother Yashoda is churning the yogurt. I'm going to break it. But Krishna is smart. He knows if he breaks the pot at the top, it'll, because there's nothing there, it's hollow, it'll make a big sound. So what he does, he finds where the yogurt is. So when he breaks the pot there, the sound is muffled by the contents of the pot. Then he thinks, if I break on the side, only some of it will come out. But if I break from the bottom, it will all spill out. So with a small stone, he breaks the pot and all the yogurt starts to fill out. Half yogurt, half butter. And then as we know, children then realize, uh oh. <laughs> I did an oopsie. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. And so then what do children do? Wait there and wait for mother to come? <laughs> Get out of town. So Krishna says, oh boy. And he runs. And he sees a storeroom that's locked. He unlocks a storeroom and goes into the storeroom. Climbs up onto a bed. On that bed, he turns up another mortar. Sits up on top of the mortar and sees hanging pots of butter. It's victory. So he takes a pot of butter and he is eating some butter. And then some monkeys have come and he is feeding the monkeys butter. But, you know, thieves are very good. It says, thieves have thousand eyes. The owner of wealth has two eyes. So Krishna is being very attentive. He knows, he's enjoying butter. But he's also trying to figure out at some point, Mother Yashoda is going to come. So Mother Yashoda returns from the kitchen and sees, what? What happened here? And sees all the yoga on the floor. Where is Krishna? Nowhere to be found. She knows. She starts smiling. And then she says, this Krishna, 
He's a very clever boy. She knew it was him. How? Because the pot was broken so expertly that all the contents spilled. No sound was made. Even when he ran away, his bangles were not tinkling. His, ankle, his um, hand bangles were not, nothing. And he's a really sharp boy. So she said, okay, where did he go? Where did he go? Unfortunately for Krishna, like most criminals, they try really, really hard to cover all of their tracks. But he stepped in one pot of the butter and then another, and that made a transcendental roadmap of footprints to the storeroom. So Mother Yashoda goes like this. Mm. He's gone there. So she goes. And what does she do? When Lord Krishna had stick in hand. So she goes to get a stick. And then she puts it under her sari. Now she's smart. She knows. This thief is a good thief. Expert thief. So he'll be listening and being very attentive to not get caught. So she's going very quietly. Making sure none of her bangles are making noise. Remember, when she was you know, turning the butter full cartels. But now... Walking, trying to make sure. And Krishna, eyes all around his head, right? He sees everything. He's omniscient. He's Paramatma. But he doesn't see Mother Yashoda coming. <laughs> this is the transcendental love. So Krishna is enjoying one mouth me, one mouth monkey, one mouth me, one mouth. Okay, he's just in bliss, but he knows in the back of his mind. My time of enjoyment will end some point, you know. Kids always know, right? It's coming to an end. So, finally, the monkeys start doing this. And Krishna's like, what's wrong? And then he looks, and he sees Mother Yashoda. But this time, something different. What? This word. Prasamikshya. Very beautiful word. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur comments. Prasamikshya. Krishna took strong attention to Mother Yashoda's beautiful uh, earrings, her beautiful bangles, nice silken sari. Shukadev Goswami describes the very beautiful decorations Mother Yashoda was having this particular day. Malati flowers in her head, tied so nicely. That's what Krishna was looking at? He saw a stick in Mother Yashoda's hand. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I've done lots of mischief, but none is warranted stick. This is not good news. Unfortunately for him, Balram Ji and Mother Rohini were out of the house. Upananda had called them for some engagement, so they were gone. Nanda Baba was gone preparing for Indra Puja. His usual saviors, all gone. <laughs> He's like, oh boy, now I'm in trouble. So in a moment's decision, he has to think, I have to run. And he had two directions he could run. One was towards the house, and one was towards the courtyard. And he decides, you know, let me run towards the courtyard and to the gate. If I can get to the gate, mother will not beat me in public. <laughs> Inside the house, she may give me a couple. But in outside, no, no, she'll be lenient. So he's smart. So he runs. He just takes off. And Mother Yashoda was not expecting him to run this quickly. But Mother Yashoda is determined. So she starts running. Now, how Krishna is running from Mother Yashoda in fear. This is another seeming contradiction. Yamaraj, personification of fear, is fearful of Krishna. But Krishna is now running in fear from one lady with a stick. Giant Putana came as big as a mountain to try to kill Krishna and Krishna just smilingly killed her. Now, no fear. 
big, big demons, Tarnarvata, Shakatasura, big, big demons came. No fear. But Mother Yashoda, with a small stick, is inspiring fear? Again, the depth of love of Mother Yashoda. So Krishna is running and running. Now, in this verse, we see great, great yogis, great, great mystics. They try with intense austerity and tapasya to catch Krishna, to even catch just a glimpse of his toe, but they cannot. But this lady is going to catch Krishna. So she is running, and Krishna is running. And the Malati flowers on her head are thinking, who is this lady? that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is running from. Huh? What we are doing on her head, we should be at her feet. And these flowers began to fall from her head and touch the lotus feet of Mother Yashoda, knowing their rightful place. So Krishna is running towards this gate, thinking if I can reach the gate, I'll be saved. And he's running, and he's not sure exactly how far behind Mother Yashoda is. And so he takes one second to look, and boom! <laughs> Mother Yashoda grabs him. Grabs him by the right hand. Now, Krishna's thinking what to do. So, like a good boy or girl, but in this case boy, they are very good at producing tears. <laughs> so Krishna decides to produce some tears. And he starts producing tears. But, Something unusual again is happening. Every time up to this point Krishna cried, Mother Yashoda would take her sari and wipe the tears. Oh Krishna, what's wrong? What's going on? Can I help you? But this time she's not. So Krishna takes his hand and rubs more and more, trying to make more tears, <laughs> thinking, how am I going to get Mother Yashoda to do this? He's thinking, now something is really serious. Stick in hand. She's not wiping my tears. I am really in for it. And Krishna is just looking up at Mother Yashoda. And here our Acharya's comment again. This is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is awaiting judgment. Who is the Supreme Judge? Krishna, every action we do, it is judged by who? Krishna. Every action we do, it carries an equal and opposite reaction. Who administers that reaction? Krishna. He awards and punishes based on activities. He is the supreme giver of judgments. But here... He is awaiting judgment from Mother Yashoda. When Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Padityaja Ma Mekam Sharanam Vaja, Amtam Sarva Papedyo, He says, You surrender all varieties of religion, you abandon everything, and Ma Mekam, you surrender unto me. But what does Krishna do in exchange? He surrenders back. What is Krishna doing? He is surrendering to Mother Yashoda's judgment. This is the power of devotional service. That love that the devotee has is so pleasing to Krishna that he even gives up his own position and awaits judgment from his beloved devotee. So Krishna is now waiting. What is Mother Yashoda going to do? Now Krishna's fear actually goes into a very elevated state. And Mother Yashoda realizes, okay, I've maybe gone too far. And so she puts the stick down. Because he has gone into this very strong state. But she is trying to figure out what to do. The problem is, you know, when Krishna was running, Mother Yashoda is chastising Krishna. Oh, you king of thieves! 
Oh, you monkey lover. Oh, you butter thief. Like this, she is chastising Krishna. And Krishna is yelling back. Oh, I am a monkey lover? Then I'll go to the forest and be with the monkeys. So Mother Yashoda heard this. So she thought, if I don't protect Krishna, if I take my eyes off him, he'll run to the forest. Because he's now very upset. We know when boys are upset, they'll do something, right? They'll do something bad. <laughs> something to get back at parents. Actually, when, when Krishna went to the storeroom, we might wonder why he was eating day-old butter and not eating the fresh butter that uh, Mother Yashoda was making. Why he went and ate the day-old butter? He said, you know what? She wants to go take care of that milk. I'm going to eat day-old butter. I'll get sick. And then Mother Yashoda will have to take me to the Mathura, take me to the hospital and spend lots of money to cure me. <laughs> That'll be their punishment. So like this, Krishna is thinking, Mother Yashoda thinks, Krishna will do something to make this work and get back. So she decides, I shall bind Krishna. But before giving judgment, you know, we want to hear from the defendant, right? What is your explanation, right? So Mother Yashoda says, explain yourself. And Krishna says, I don't know. She said, who broke the butter pot? He says, the Lord's stick broke the butter pot. Is he lying or is it true? <laughs> he says, who was feeding the monkeys? I don't know. The creator of the monkeys was feeding the monkeys. <laughs> and, and Mother Yashoda is like, the creator, the monkeys. You are so clever with your words, but you cannot fool me. You can fool the whole of Goko, but not me. So Krishna is still waiting. What to do? What am I going to do? And then Mother Yashoda decides, okay, I'm going to bind him. Now, we know she takes Krishna, tries to bind him to the grinding mortar. Right? The most beautiful picture. So Mother Yashoda decides to get some ropes to try to bind Krishna. So she gets some ropes and she is about to bind Krishna. Now meanwhile, you know, people are walking by on the street and they're saying, what is going on here? Krishna is crying, Mother Yashoda had a stick, now she's trying to bind Krishna. So all the elderly gopis are kind of coming. Mother Yashoda, what is going on? What has your Krishna done today? <laughs> Why they are so interested? <laughs> because every time Krishna would go and create some you know, disturbance in their homes, they would come and lobby their complaint to Krishna. And Mother Yashoda, oh, don't accuse my son, my innocent sweet boy of doing this and that. He is sweet, he never does anything wrong. You go back. So Mother Yashoda was also always doubting, Krishna is not mischievous, he's very sweet and innocent. So all these elders go, yeah, now you see his innocence. What did he do so much that you want to bind him? <laughs> you, you know the story of the gopi trying to bind Krishna? So one time, Krishna was stealing butter from one of the gopis' house. And they were all, they could never catch him. But... Finally, they decided, you know, Mother Yashoda doesn't believe us. So the gopi went in and caught Krishna and said, I'm going to tie him to this pillar. And then I'm going to call Mother Yashoda and show him with his hands still full of butter in the butter room. Then she'll believe. So she gets some rope and she's tying Krishna, but the knot is not working. And Krishna's saying, no, you don't do this way, you have to do this way and up and around. And she's doing, and she's not working, and she's doing, and like seven, eight, ten minutes pass. And Krishna said, no, no, you come from inside. And he said, do you want me to show you? He said, yeah, yeah, you can show me. So, she does, and Krishna does a tie, tuk -tuk, tie, says, tie, and runs off. So this is Krishna, always playing games with his beautiful devotees. So this time, the gopi is thinking, oh, Mother Yashoda is really going to try to bind Krishna. So Mother Yashoda brings the rope and around it is just two inches short. So she goes and gets some more rope, ties it to the end, two inches short. Goes gets more rope, two inches short. Keeps getting more and more rope. 
How much rope Nanda Maharaj has? He has 900,000 cows. He has miles and miles of rope. All of it she's emptied her store head. Then the gopi is saying, Mother Yashoda, let it go. You're not going to bind him. She says, no, I will go to the end of the universe. Why? Because she was trying to protect Krishna from getting into some trouble. She was determined. So then the elderly gopis, they began to bring their rope from their house. And like this, they keep tying and they exhausted the whole neighborhood's rope. And it was not happening. Mother Yashoda at this point was becoming fatigued. She was perspiring. But she was still determined. And each time it was two finger lengths short. And Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur explains to us that these two fingers short are extremely important. Our love for Krishna, our ability to bind Krishna, not with ropes, but with love, it requires two things. And these two things we should carry in our left hand and right hand. One is we must be determined. Our determination in spiritual life is essential to success. You know, we, we be determined in so many things in our life. To get a job, to get a degree, to find a spouse, to get a home, to come to this country, to acquire a car. So much determination. But when it comes to chanting our rounds, reading Srila Prabhupada's books, coming to the temple, it's too much. We must put determination into our devotional life to be successful. Too often what do we think? Oh, when Krishna wants it to happen, when Krishna blesses me, it'll happen. Actually, that is the second point. We need our determination, but our determination alone will not result in success. We must have Krishna's mercy. Without Krishna's mercy, nothing can happen. But, with Krishna's mercy, is that sufficient to tie Krishna? How short it will be? One inch. Krishna's mercy alone is not sufficient. We must do our part. Our determination is what will allow us to capture Krishna's mercy. If we just wait for Krishna to bless, Krishna bestow, you know, we go to Guru all the time. Oh Guru, please bless me to chant my rounds nicely. Oh Guru, please bless me to do my service nicely. And what does Guru say? You have my blessings for you. It's time for you to now do. <laughs> we must have determination. But when we have determination, Krishna's mercy is guaranteed. So because Krishna saw Mother Yashoda so determined, he finally allowed himself to be tied by Mother Yashoda. And in this way, he became bound, not by the ropes, but by motherly love. He was not fed by the milk of Mother Yashoda. He was fed by the love of Mother Yashoda. That is the definition of bhakti, the expression of our love to Krishna. Krishna is not eating our chapatis and sabji. He is eating patram pushpam phalam trayam yome bhaktya prayachati. It is the love and devotion that goes into it. Your salt may be perfect, your oil may be perfect, your masala might be, might, might be perfect, but if there is not bhakti, Krishna won't taste any of that. All he relishes, the only ingredient he relishes in our offerings is our love. And this is what Mother Yashoda shows us through this Dharma Bhagavan. So Mother Yashoda, now having tied Krishna, we'll go for a few more minutes, has tied Krishna, and he has gone to, on to do her household chores, that she started very early in the morning. Krishna disturbed. Now Krishna is crying. He is trying to make a scene, right? That's what kids do. <laughs> Balramji, Mother Rohini, where are you? 
Because he knew if they were here, this would not have elevated to this level. <laughs> it would have it would have stopped sometime before. It would not have gone to this extent. And he becomes mad. Where you have gone? You've left me, abandoned me. Mother Yashoda has done this to me. Where are you? And Lord Balram comes. And he sees Krishna tied. And he becomes angry. You know, <laughs> and he says, don't you know who I am? I am Ananta Shesh. I can drown the whole universe with my poison, my fire. Who has done this? I will destroy them immediately. And Krishna says, Mother Yashoda did it. And all his Sankarshana potency <laughs> gone. <laughs> gone. He becomes like a mouse. And the, I'm like, Mother Yashoda? You're on your own, buddy. <laughs> but then he gets his second wind. How Mother Yashoda could do it? Don't you know who this is? This is the source of all incarnations. Krishna Stu Bhagavan Swayam. Bama, Narshima, Matsya, Kurma, all. And Mother Yashoda says, Oh, this is the, the, all these incarnations that come in my home, huh? <laughs> One thunder comes in the sky, this boy comes running and hiding underneath my sari. And this is, this is uh, Narshima Ne. And who are you? I am Lakshman, Ankarshana, Sheshana. Yeah? And just gives one look and he goes running. <laughs> So Mother Yashoda goes back to her household chores. Now Balaramji, Krishna is still crying. And Balaramji says, I tried. I told you so many times, Krishna, why you do this? You don't listen. You create so much nonsense. You deserve this. Mm -hmm. This is your punishment. Good for you. Mm -hmm. You don't listen. Now you know, learn next time. No mischief. Because he's the elder brother. Right? The elder brother knows. That's to keep the younger brother out of trouble. That's a full-time job in, in, in his case. <laughs> So Krishna says, Balaramji says, oh, so what, what can we do? So now it is becoming like daytime. And all the coward boys are ready to play, ready to enjoy, but they cannot go. So Krishna being bound to this mortar, while he was crying, he was actually in, in ecstasy and happiness. And so he decides to start crawling around. Now we know that in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj are two very special trees. These Arjuna trees. And residing within those trees are Nalakuver and Manigri. These are the two sons of Kuber who were cursed. Cursed by Narada Muni. To be cursed by a pure devotee of the Lord is a blessing. Because a pure devotee doesn't curse out of revenge, out of envy, out of spite. A pure devotee of the Lord curses to purify, to benedict, to benefit the recipient. That is the distinction between the materialist and the devotee. So Narada Muni, due to some past times, had cursed Manigriva and Nilakuvara to be standing as trees, two tall Arjuna trees. But the blessing was that they would be in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. And they had the great fortune of being the eyewitness to all of these very sweet pastimes of Krishna and Balaram. How many of us would like to have been an eyewitness to this Dhamma Bandana pastime? So sweet. So they were very blessed. So, but today, Krishna decided, I will deliver these Arjuna trees. Now, our Acharya's comment on this. He has known that these two personalities are in his trees. Why on this day he decided to deliver them? It's explained that being bound to the mortar, he understood what it's like to be bound up. And he had some sympathy for the two personalities being bound up in these trees. And so in that mood, he decides to deliver them. But another final point on this I'll make. It's a very sweet potency of Krishna. See, Krishna is unlimited in his reciprocation. Krishna has a best friend relationship with everyone. You know, in the material world, when we have friendships, 
right? And if we have three or four people who are friends, often there's envy develops, right? Because if we spend more time with one, it means I spend less time with another, and sometimes some conflict occurs, you know? But Krishna, he's unlimited. So he has this potency that he gives a hundred percent of himself to you. So what's left for you? Nothing? Purna meva fishishyate. When one leaves Krishna, how many Krishna has left? So if he gives hundred percent here, how many he has left for you? Hundred percent. And he gives hundred percent for you, how much he has for you? And for you? For everybody? All of you? Even in the back? <laughs> Krishna has full love. And this is the transcendental nature of Krishna. There's no competition for Krishna's attention. Because he is unlimited. So, very important what he does. He is bound by Mother Yashoda's love and bound to the mortar. But being bound by Mother Yashoda's love did not preclude him from delivering Mani Griva and Alukavya. It shows that Krishna, while giving himself one place, still has opportunity for all of us. So, if we take to the process of devotional service very nicely, very sincerely, and follow in the footsteps of these great devotees, particularly in the mood of Vrindavan, then we can experience the same ecstasy and bliss and happiness following in their footsteps. So this is Dhamana any comments, questions, realization? Yes. The question is, why do we say Yashoda Damagar? Uh, why do we not? And we talk Radha Damagar. So Radha Rani is always with Krishna in all of his different uh, uh, names of Krishna. Right? These are these names are for different pastimes. So we have this with, with, with Krishna, with all of the different. Like we call Radha Govinda. What is Govinda? The pleasure, giving a pleasure to? Cows. But still Radha Rani is there. So Radha Rani is there always. But we can discuss that this is the Pasama, Yashoda, and Dhamada. What does Yashoda mean? Yashoda means the giver of fame. She gave fame to Krishna through this pastime. That is her position. Of course, Krishna is the source of all fame. But through this pastime, her whole existence is to give glories to Krishna. So, but we always engage uh, in our worship through always Radha and Krishna. And again, Krishna can come in all his different pastimes, forms, and names. Okay? Any, I told you I will ask for some inspirations, realizations, something you'll take away tomorrow. Besides, don't break the butter pot. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone like to share something? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu, for nectarian class. Prabhu, regarding the class given to Manikriva and Navakriva, because they both are the devotees of Lashiva and they are the servants of Lashiva. So it's not a small position. They are in good position. And they are sons of Kuvaya. Even uh, uh, Nada Muni has been offended. Uh, generally, Munis are said to be like a equal in uh, uh, mana for mana, fully in the system mana. We should not, do not care. Uh, still, uh, I don't know how, like out of something that he got, uh, cursed, he, he cursed me. Right? So it's a little bit more cursed because hun the curse was for hundred years of devotal <coughs> Yeah, so, so, 
So the question is that Manigriva and Nalukuvera were great personalities, right? They were servants of Lord Shiva, they were sons of Kuber, and they offended Narada Muni, who was a saint. So a saint should be controlled in mind, and you know, that's the meaning of Muni, and should not be disturbed by that offense, and should not have cursed for such a long time, even 100 years, 100 celestial years, right? He's absolutely right. So Narada Muni was not personally offended. Narada Muni being devotee, remember, devotee has no dukkha. Their only dukkha, para dukkha dukhi. They have pain, they have suffering, seeing the suffering of others. What was Narada Muni suffering? He was saying that these two extraordinary personalities, Manigriva and Nalukuber, they have become overwhelmed by their position and ego. They have lost their consciousness. So his curse was not out of anger, was not out of spite, but to teach and help bring them to a pure... They, what happened to them? They became pure devotees. But at, from what position they were? They were naked in the waters, enjoying so was it a curse or was it a promotion? It is the greatest of all promotions. Just like when mother slaps child for not studying. Is it a slap out of uncontrolled senses or a slap of love? So when the devotee becomes upset, anger, it is not due to uncontrolled senses. It is due to try to teach. Guru also means heavy. Sometimes Guru becomes heavy with the disciple. Not because they feel something, but to teach. Because without becoming heavy, we'll not learn. At least speaking for myself. So, that happens. So, this is the difference. You know, you see different curses. When Durvasa Muni became agitated because Ambarish Maharaj had broken his fast, what he did, he tried to kill Ambarish Maharaj by invoking a demon. What did Narada Muni do? He made them pure devotees. So, this is the difference. So, his curse was not out of an uncontrolled mind. It was out of immense love for these two personalities. And you may say that the punishment was stiff, no? The punishment is always according to the stiffness of the impurity. If the false ego was light, then the punishment is light. But if the false ego is heavy and the punishment is light, what happens? We don't correct. So when we get stiff punishment from Guru, we should be grateful. Because then we have some hope of overcoming our stiff impurity. But if the punishment is light, then we won't correct. So a devotee, a pure devotee like Narada Muni, is never excessive. But it always is sufficient enough to purify. Any other questions or comments? Realizations? So nobody took me up on my offer? <laughs> I guess I failed in today's class. Please forgive me. Sorry. Okay, so we'll do uh, Damarastakam now. We're doing Damarastakam now. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda Ki Jai Shri Radha Damadar Ki Jai Shri Prabhupada Hare 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 Hare